Hello, Abby. All right, good deal. Sorry it took me a couple of days to get in here to look at these. I'm not sure if you built these in Elementor or in WordPress Editor. Probably just WordPress Editor, I would guess, because that's where we started. Um, but maybe you built them in Elementor as well, so we'll get these open and take a look. Looks like you did them in Elementor. Great. Okay, so we'll go in here. I'll do the edit in Elementor. Actually, there's going to be, we'll come back to that page to um, in just a minute because I want to talk about URLs as well. So these are going to be about gut brain connection which we'll do a quick Google search for and we're going to do what is leaky gut as well. What is leaky guy? What is leaky gut? Uh, yeah, I have pre-search running so if you're ever curious about pre-search let me know. Uh, it's a crypto thing, but you can earn crypto for searching on the web, so kind of nifty. All right, what is leaky gut? Uncategorized, so we can you know remove these bylines or leave the bylines. Um, we probably don't want to have uncategorized, and until you get a bunch of traffic, we don't really want to feature comments. Um, so cool. Okay, so this is a start of an article. Um, considered elimination diet so this looks like I don't know what the word count is on this but uh, I can tell you probably we should do a much deeper dive um, these days for Google publishing 300 to 400 500 it might be 300 to 500 words there uh, it, you're really gonna have a hard time ranking for things uh, just because they that what they're looking for and they just came out with or they're coming out with this week 275 words so I mean uh, this is below what I would consider bare minimum for getting something to rank in Google uh, this one is a bit longer but let's so and we also have different line spacings here and I'll, I can show you what happened why that happened I'm guessing it got copied and pasted out of a Google Doc so you can see you've got like single line spacing spacing here and then like double line spacing there. So I'll show you what happened with that. Um, but we've got word counter here. And to say um, it is good to publish content, um, just to publish content, even if, um, you know, it's a minimal amount of content. But, sorry, there is a mini excavator driving down our road. It's distracting. I'm not sure why they're driving it down the road. They literally just took it up the road not that long ago. Anyway, okay, so this is 343 words, so um, this would basically be at the minimum of what I would say, you know, to have in here for a character or for a word count. Um, you can feel it. So where to begin, a great place to start is with testing. Each one of us testing such as allows for... Okay, so we are very technical on this. Um, as I'm just reading the article. So I'm going to go back in here and just show you. So why you are getting weird line spacing. If we go into the text version here, we've got P, dir, letter, line height, 1.38. And then we scroll down here, and we've probably got more code down here. Span style, background color, 12-point font, font weight, 400, pre-wrap span. This code is literally doing nothing. Um, so wherever this got copied in from, it's doing whatever it's doing. Uh, and then this has back to a font size of 12 pre-wrap, right? So there's just all this extra stuff in here uh, that doesn't need to be here. So this is the gut brain connection. I'm going to go back out here. Gut brain connection. Gut brain connection. Is this leaky gut? This is what is leaky gut. All right. So let's go here and let's go back to the article about what is leaky gut. And um, I'm going to go into the text version, and I'm going to paste my content into the text version. And while this affects our font face on this post, um, it uh, anyway. So this affects our font face on the post, uh, but we can change that as well. So um, what I would do in here, we're going to go back to the visual tab, and we're going to go just format this now. So I'm going to go here hit delete and hit enter so now we've got line spacing without having all of that extra code right uh, huge amounts of code just sitting behind that uh, this post so and the more code Google has to search through the more work it has to do meaning uh, you're less likely to rank because if another site is competing against you and uh, you want to rank for something 
uh, if they have less code for Google to search through, but the same kind of content that you have, they're going to outrank you. Um, just the very nature of the thing. So, uh, stool culture, food intolerance testing, and intestinal antigenic permeability screen. All right, so these are, so now you have a leaky gut. Um, an ellipsis becomes a weird single character. And you don't have to do this, but it's better to go in and just change it into three periods. Um, stool culture has an extra space after the food intolerance testing. Yep, okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to bold these things because these are our points here. And just make this a little more bolded and a little more formatted. Um, and it looks like in the style for the typography for the default here, we already have kind of a bolded font, so we can go in and change that from the default and just leave the font. I'm going to change the font weight to 400, so now we can actually see our bold. Um, so already just a little bit easier to read. And then when I'm looking at this page, this is a gi giant, giant, giant image, but it doesn't really contribute anything. It's a magnifying glass with some squiggly lines. Um, it's not that it's bad or anything, it's just minimal, right? So. Um, what I would do with this is probably even take this article and I'm going to duplicate this section. So now we have it twice on the page. And then I'm going to go in and maybe even, I'm going to leave two paragraphs up top. And then I'm going to delete everything out of this box on the upper box. Uh, that's fine. We're going to leave it all in one box for now. That's fine. I'll delete this out. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much info. <laughs> so um, what I would recommend doing, though, is people are always much more engaged by pictures of human faces or like this is about leaky gut. And, and this is not necessarily leaky gut, right? This doesn't say anything to me about leaky gut. This says magnifying glass with some squiggles or maybe a frying pan with some bacon um, or I don't know what else it could be. So it says one of those two things to me. Um, it's not a terrible image by any means, but just for whatever it's worth, you know, if it can be more, um, if it can have humans on it, uh, people are much more likely to stick to the content a little bit better. Uh, so you have leaky gut, now what? Okay, so these are the three things you can do. Great, let's go in here to our content and let's make these bulleted. Bulleted uh, items let people's eyes relax, and you may have had these bulleted when we started, I don't know. I do need to change the default font, but I don't know what I would break by doing that because um, I don't know where all we have it. So for now, you can just set the, oh, what's it called? Set the typography. In the typography, you can set the weight of that font to be 400. Weight is the word I was looking for. All right, so we're going to go in here, stool culture. Ugh, popping. Stop popping back to the top. Stool culture, food intolerance, intestinal antigenic permeability screening. Great. Okay, so now we have an article that's a little more formatted, um, and I think I'm just going to stick with formatting for this particular video. There's so much more that can be done, uh, and a lot more that should be done, actually, um, really. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the other article. We'll stick with formatting as a section here, just to start off with. All right, so you've got kind of weird line spacing here, um, and so we're going to go to our word counter. This gets rid of all of the the gut brain connection. This gets rid of, I just want to make sure I didn't accidentally put the wrong content on here. Yep. So this is just, you're copying it into like a text editor and this gets rid of all of the formatting. Uh, there's a ton of tools online that you can use for doing this or you can just copy and paste your article. But again, when you copy and paste it, you want to copy and paste it into the text tab to remove all of this crazy formatting that's coming over. And Microsoft Word does this, Google Docs does this, they have all of this code behind it um, and it does funny things when you copy and paste into here. So uh, you want to just use the text tab when pasting in, not the visual tab. All right, so we're going to go change our style and we're going to change our typography now. We're going to change the weight to 400. What is the connection between the gut and brain? All right, so um, uh, again, the icon here, I don't know if you're, you're like hunting in the icon library or downloading these from somewhere, but I don't actually know what I'm looking at here. Um, I'm, 
it's so, it's sort of clear, but it might be just because it's so big. Yeah, when I make it a little bit smaller, it becomes a little more clear that this is like an intestinal tract with some bacteria. Um, but the most important thing on here is the content. All right, so we want to give the content the focus, and then um, I'm again trying not to overload with information. So we want to give the content the focus and add images in as needed, but really the focus should be the content. And then we can break it up with bullet points, images, lists, that sort of thing. Uh, the vagus nerve, we know that this system of microbes plays a huge role in mental health. The vagus nerve connects the enteric nervous system and the central nervous system of the brain. Is our, and is the vagus nerve connects the and the central nervous system of the brain. Cool. I would just shorten that. Um, the vagus nerve. If we're going to try and talk about the vagus nerve, let's talk about the vagus nerve. Because you have to talk about it multiple times in order to rank for it. Um, we can talk about SEO a lot. But the vagus nerve is argu uh, arguably the most important nerve in the body. Two systems are in constant communication. Which uh, nervous system, central nervous system. The two systems are in constant. Cool. So one thing you might consider doing um, to help break up this content is to add headers uh, to the sections of the page. A great place to start with is testing. Um, okay, well, just adding a little more line breaks in here. So let's go see what ranks for these things for Google, right? So uh, there's ads here, but then let's go look at the gut-brain connection from Harvard, okay? Uh, questions people also ask. How the gut and brain are connected? How do you heal a gut-brain connection? How do you heal? Heal might be a good word to include more often. Three diseases associated with the gut affected by the brain-gut connection. So you could actually add a whole section to your article about three diseases, right? Um, and you could use these words. So three diseases associated with the gut. And you can put that as your header right here. Um, So, multiple diseases, and actually what I'm going to do is, with this article, I'm going to do the same thing um, that I was going to do with the other article, but we're actually going to break this up So into two different blocks here. So, And I'll show you why in just a minute. Uh, so we're going to duplicate this, and I'm going to delete the first two paragraphs and remove the image from my lower section, and then delete the last two paragraphs from my upper section. So go here, come on, delete, great. So we're starting the lower section. I'm going to go over here and delete this image. Delete. Cool. And if you want it to go the full width of the page, you can. You could just delete this column. I don't think I'm going to do that because I kind of want it to align in this case. But uh, many chronic autoimmune diseases. Okay, so we're going to delete this. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and grab a text element. We're going to drop our text editor in here. Alternatively, uh, because we might want to rank for some of these things, we're going to give it a heading tag. So this is going to be an H2 because this is really important, but it's not the most important thing on the page. And the heading tag we're going to add is going to be that question that we came up with. Uh, diseases associated um, let's see, so, so something like multiple diseases associated with the gut are affected by the brain-gut connection. Cool. So, and we're just going to split this up just to make it a little easier, right? People are distracted by everything. Everything's. All the things. People are distracted by everything these days. I literally had a truck drive by when I was saying that, and it distracted me from saying everything. So, um, I didn't even make that up. That's awesome. So, what I'm going to do is just break this article up a little bit so that people are actually, as they're scrolling through it, a lot of people don't actually read the whole article. Right? What they do is they skim through it and find the things that are relevant to them. Um, all right, many of my patients suffer from, let's just make this a declarative thing. Many of my patients suffer from Epstein-Barr, Hashimoto's, Lyme disease, anxiety, depression, and more. 
period. These clients are able to lessen systems after they work on healing the gut. Understanding this connection can help build a happier and healthier mind and body. All right. Um, okay. So anyway, this art, this video, I'm already 15 minutes in. I'm just going to keep that really around formatting. We're not going to dig too much into SEO, um, but definitely something to really talk about with these articles. Um, so multiple diseases associated with the gut are affected by the brain gut connection. Oh, so the thing I want to go back to though here is if we go to some of these articles and we see what's ranking and we look at how their content looks, we'll find out how we should make our content look too. Four facts about the brain gut health connection. Okay, I'm just going to open a bunch of these because what we're looking for is similarities between the formatting, right? Uh, in a different video, different topic, different time, we'll talk about the, the content and looking for similarities between the content. What you see as you scroll down through here, I didn't even, I mean, I haven't ever searched for this, right? But they have a headline and then they have a bunch of stuff related to that headline. And then they have a headline and they have a bunch of stuff related to that headline. And then they have a headline and they have a bunch of stuff related to that headline. And this goes on and on. Okay, that's that page. Uh, this page, they have a headline and they have bullets and stuff related to that headline. Right. This one's actually pretty short, but they have a bulleted list that is pretty in-depth about these things. So, and really, the article is just about four fast facts. Right. So they just wanted to get through four fast facts. Uh, fitness for mind and body, the gut brain. So we have a header, we have some text, we have an image. Then we have a header, we have some text, we have some more text, and we have some images. A header, some text, some images. A header, some text, some images. Um, we have a the, the main header, and then we have a subhead and some text related to that. And then we have a subhead and some text related to that with some bullets. Right, so this is what ranks in Google. Um, for right or wrong, these this is sort of the format we have to follow if we want to rank. So here's a header. Didn't know this would be here, but I know because this is what ranks in Google. Having a subhead and then having some top content related to that. Then a main head, so this would be like an H2. And then these things are going to be H3s related to that H2. Um, then we have another H3 down here. So, I mean, we could keep going on, but I think you get the idea. It's like main headline, then subheadline, then things related to that subheadline. And if there is a topic that warrants breaking out further, then it's a sub subheadline, right? And how we look at that is on the page, the main thing is going to be the H1, right? The title is going to be the, the, the H1. And then these things, there's going to be an H2. And then there's going to be H3 related to that H2. This is an H2 with several H3s underneath related to that. And what you're telling Google is this is the structure of this article. These are the most important things related to this H2 are these H3s underneath this H2. So as you're scrolling through the article, if somebody's looking for using diet to better treat IBS or whatever, this particular article seems to be a lot about IBS, um, then Google knows, oh, they want to use diet for better treatment. Oh, well, okay. They want to use exercise for better treatment. Okay, great. So you're helping Google sort of scan through the content to know how Google should rank it. Um, and that's really just structure. That's not even content so much as just structure. So when you're going through this, if you think about it from a, I'm going to create one main topic and then underneath that I'm going to have two or three subtopics h2 h3 right so I'm going to get the topic I'm going to intro the idea I'm going to have two or three subtopics of that and then within each of those subtopics I'm going to have three or four h3s and I'm going to I'm going to expand out all of that content um, but it really wouldn't be a big deal to put together a thousand words on this topic it'd be pretty straightforward to put together a thousand words on this topic um, just there's so much research about it. Um, so in any case, what Google is ranking for is the most helpful content and this structure on the, on the internet about the thing. You can pick up a little bit of traffic by just posting some content, but if you really want to pick up traffic, um, I would go with this sort of format where you've got bulleted lists, breaking things out, making sometimes shorter sentences, um, and that will help these things to rank. Overall, good start. I mean, you've never been in WordPress before, and I think you did a good job 
getting content in here. Um, didn't have to ask me any questions about how to get it in there or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and just publish both of these pieces for now. Um, and then, you know, we can work on the next pieces of content as well. I would probably in here just go in and also add a shift plus enter just to kind of even break it up a little bit further just so that it looks visually broken up. So that just bumps the thing to the next line. And again, just visually helping people scroll through. I was going to show you the thing about why the image, what happens with the image on mobile. So with this, uh, you can always look at probably 60% of Dr. Lisa's traffic is going to be on a phone when they're reading her blog. If they even come to the blog post, but when they come to the blog post, they're going to be on a mobile phone. 60%, 60%, 40%. Maybe some will be on the tablet, but mostly it'll be 60, 35, 5. So 60% um, on a mobile phone, 35 on the desktop of some kind, and 5% on a mobile phone. So you have this really cool tool here that's called responsive mode, and you can look at what your article is going to look like in different screen types. So we go here, okay, on a tablet, that's going to look all right, and then we're going to look on mobile and what happens on mobile. And part of the reason we break this out into two sections is so that we don't just end up with this random, what is this image doing at the bottom of this post when I'm scrolling down here, right? I go to the previous post. Okay, great. But this just doesn't make any sense to have there where if you put it after the first paragraph or second paragraph, uh, it would make a lot more sense. So because you're whatever your image is, right, to represent the article. So in this case, we're going to have I'm just going to actually take this and put it in the next block down. I'm just going to actually duplicate this guy. And we're going to, yeah, there's more to it than just like writing some content and posting it, um, especially when you're competing against the entire world on the internet. No pressure. All right. Uh, here we go. I'm going to delete this, and we're going to delete this here. And then you'll see when we go into mobile what happens uh, with this article. So. I'm going to do the responsive mode thing again, which is, I don't know if you saw it in the video before, uh, when I did it before, but it's down here in your settings. So you can go look at responsive mode and see what things are going to look like. And we're going to go tablet, and fine, looks good on tablet, no problem. Um, I need to actually clean up this template a little bit, but it's all, it's all good still. So we're going to go ahead and go mobile now, and then we have this, and we're talking about that. Oh, that's cool. That kind of looks better, right, because it's in the middle of the content kind of explains what we're talking about as opposed to just like a random image stuck at the end of the article. So again, if 60% of people are going to be on a phone and they see this just randomly at the end of the article, it's going to be weird. Uh, it used to be much easier to do content for the web because you didn't have to think through all this stuff, but you do now. It's just part of the deal. So huh, hopefully I didn't just like... Hopefully that wasn't a uh, fire hose, drinking from a fire hose. I, I imagine it probably was just a little bit, but um, feel free to watch the video twice or ask me any questions. And overall, good job. I mean, this is a good start for sure to publishing content on the blog. Thank you very much.